Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to give everyone some updates on COVID-19 based on recent things I've been seeing in the media and medical journals. The first question I thought I would address is, what's the deal with rapid antigen testing? Antigen testing has been advertised as rapid tests for COVID-19 versus the traditional PCR tests that can take days to get results. Antigen tests usually take about 15 minutes to get results. And now that we know more about what the level of virus needs to be in your body in order to pass it along to others, the rapid antigen tests can often find people that are contagious with COVID-19, not just simply infected with COVID-19. Because we know that the PCR nasopharyngeal test can stay positive for weeks or months after someone's ability to infect others have passed. On August 26, Abbott received emergency use authorization for an easy to use COVID-19 antigen test that uses a nasal swab, not the nasal pharyngeal swab that has to go deep into the nose, but a swab that's able to be used just in the front of the nose. And it's recommended for patients with symptoms if it's used within seven days of symptoms. You still must have a doctor's prescription and it is gonna be done in doctor's offices. But I think this may be the first step towards a more exciting prospect with using home-based antigen testing on a paper strip for screening. We can use this same technology, but at home without a prescription. These antigen tests are not as sensitive, but the hope is that it will catch the people that are able to spread COVID-19 and will allow them to know their results quickly. Current PCR testing takes days to come back and often, even when the result is positive, it may be beyond the point of when a person is capable of infecting someone else. My hope is that we will continue to see rapid antigen testing gaining favor. It's not to replace PCR testing, but can be used in addition to it. To learn more about rapid antigen testing, go check out Dr. Michael Minna's work at Harvard or go to his website at rapidtest.org. I do plan to do a whole episode on rapid antigen testing, so stay tuned for that. Next up, a lot of people have been asking, will we have more COVID-19 in the winter? Well, we're currently looking to Australia, and winter occurred there from June 1st to August 31st, and we did see their cases rise during the winter time. Their cases are still very low, as you can see from this graph, but unfortunately, this could be an indicator for what we can expect in the U.S. during the winter time. We're just going to have to wait and see. As we move into flu season, one question that many will have is, how can you tell the difference between the flu and COVID-19? Many of the symptoms are very similar. Are you able to tell early on what you might have? Data and statistical analysis based on symptoms were published in the journal frontiers and public health. COVID-19 usually starts with fever and then you develop a cough and then possibly other symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and possibly diarrhea. And these symptoms usually start gradually. Influenza, however, usually starts with a cough and then people develop a fever and then possibly other symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea and symptoms with influenza start very rapidly. Of course, these are generalizations based on symptoms reported and analyzed. So take them with a grain of salt. On another note, I strongly encourage everyone to get a flu vaccine this year. It's more important than ever, and they are starting to be available. And lastly, one question that I'd like to address is, who are the COVID-19 long haulers? Well, these are patients with presumed COVID-19 infection in the past, but they continue to have lingering symptoms. Fatigue is one of the most common symptoms, but other symptoms can be seen as well. Most are women and the average age is 44. Most were formerly fit and healthy. Studies are ongoing, but one recent study in JAMA notes that 87% of patients discharged from an Italian hospital had at least one symptom two months later. The most common symptom was fatigue and shortness of breath, but many long haulers had mild or no symptoms of COVID-19 before their lingering symptoms begin. Most long haulers start feeling better after four to five months of symptoms, but this is not guaranteed, and we're seeing some patients with symptoms that go beyond this time. 
Some physicians wonder if it's a form of chronic fatigue syndrome or possibly an issue with regulation of the autonomic nervous system called dysautonomia that can cause lightheadedness, fainting, unstable blood pressure, and an abnormal heart rate. If you're suffering from lingering symptoms after COVID-19, I encourage you to join a support group on Facebook. Thanks again for joining me.